Okay. Okay, good morning. Oh. Morning, Pak. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, finally, we reached the last semester, the last lecture of this semester, and it's very unfortunate that uh, we didn't have any chance to meet face to face directly considering the circumstances uh, however i hope that we won't uh, deter you from learning in this uh, <coughs> class anyway before i start our last topic which is the project management it won't be long I uh, would like to let you know about a few things, especially about the final exam and final grade. Uh, your final exam, let me just check the... schedule. Okay, so... I already set up uh, the final set with some uh, assignment, if you like. In the Korea side, it's on topic 16 in our class, final exam. Okay. So, the final exam for this class is scheduled for. Uh, Okay, so it's scheduled on Thursday, December 17. This is next week. Okay. Uh, starting from 8 a.m. and finish by 10 a.m. <coughs> I'll give you the problems uh, for final exam on Wednesday. 16th of December and the submission on Julia site will be started from Wednesday also 8 a.m. and it will close on Thursday at 10 a.m. in the morning West Indonesia time. Um, <clears throat> I give you uh, more than 24 hours to work on uh, problems that I give you. Uh, you have to submit it through Kuliah site, not Microsoft Team. However, if there is something wrong with uh, Kuliah site, like what we had uh, last semester, then I'll arrange alternative. Possibly it will be using Microsoft Team, but I'll let you know when the time comes and what I do not hope that Kuliah site will have problems during the exam, but uh, just in case, I'll let you know the alternative, okay? So, uh, after you submit your final exam, I'll create your exam and thank you for submitting your uh, group assignment on time. I haven't had time to open it yet, but I saw in Kulia said that all of you have already submitted. <coughs> so, uh, I'll create those and I'll announce the final grade draft 
to you using Kulia site and also Microsoft Teams. So uh, watch out for that. Uh, I will give you time for posting your objection or a question or clarification about your own grades. Okay, I'll give you times and after that, I will submit the grade to the faculty as a final and it's really final because I have decided that we will not have remediation in this uh, class. So there will be rem no, uh, there will be no remediation exam. Okay, so your final grade letter will be really, really final. And that's for final exam and also remedial. Any questions, anything that you need to clarify before we start? So, Any question? Is it clear about final exam and your final grade? It's pretty clear, sir. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. Now, if there's no question, I'll start the. Lecture today. So, can you see the PowerPoint slide? How is it? Yes, you can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. So, uh, <clears throat> you probably remember about the floating information system from the last uh, lecture and also from your accounting information system subject. Uh, a good news is, or bad news depends on your perspective, there is a subject called uh, information system analysis in the sense that you can take after uh, finishing this class. Okay, so it will be on your probably next semester. I can't remember exactly. But it's uh, compulsory subject. So you will uh, explore in more depth about developing information system. Okay, so that will be it. But uh, developing information system is something that quite complicated. Um, why? Because you develop something that abstract. Okay. In real life, you probably will see a lot of projects building or developing something. Building road, uh, bridges, uh, airport, seaport, things like that. Physical building, physical infrastructure. And it's very easy to see the progress of that work. When they take up the earth and starting the foundation, when they pour the concrete, <coughs> when they uh, start uh, building the structure, building the walls, uh, installing electricity, you can see it all. Okay. In fact, when the new building in our campus, the, the one that in the north was built, uh, one of my uh, hobby with Pak Selamat, the, uh, the senior lecturer from management department, is to see the progress and com make a comments about it. So you can see when the building was uh, built and when the foundation being dig up, when they pour the concrete and things like that. The system, it's not really that easy. You remember that uh, when you build a system, you can create a model of the system using data flow diagram or flow chart. Okay. In reality, when the system being used or being uh, installed and 
running is nothing like data flow diagram or flow charts. You will not find any data flow diagram or flow chart. Well, if we build a building, the blueprint, you know, the picture, the diagram will be the building. And it's very similar to what it seems on the models. But with system, it's not. It's quite abstract. So that's why it's quite uh, difficult to manage information system development projects. And a lot of projects, information system development project, are not running as good as uh, it should be. Only about 30% of information system, major information system development project in the world can be called success. About 20% fail and 50% become problematic. What's the criteria of succeed or fail project? Uh, information system development project can be called succeed if it's finished within uh, the allow, uh, within the time, okay, within the budget, within the schedule, and also it delivers everything that has been designed. So if the system <coughs> will be able to handle 1,000 transaction per minute, it could handle at least 1,000 transactions per minute. If it's faster than the old system, it, it's indeed significantly faster than the old system. Okay, that's success. Fail, uh, the project uh, could not be continued and it stopped in before it's finished. Now, problematic, what's problematic? It's 50% problematic. It means that the system finished exceeding the schedule so when they plan the system to be finished in one year uh, the reality was it's finished more than one year maybe two maybe one and a half maybe three okay. and naturally if a project exceeding its schedule it will exceeding the budget so if you have a budget of 1 billion rupiah to build the system and it's exceeding the schedule, it's highly likely that the budget will exceeding 1 billion. Okay. And the last criteria, the system itself, after it's finished late and over budget, the system itself is not performed as it should be or as it's specified it's slow it's not uh, work as intended uh, so on and so forth uh, one example of that in the recent time would be galaxy note 7 from samsung uh, it was taunted as the rifle of iPhone. I can't remember which phone it was, but yeah, it's 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 supposed to be iPhone uh, killer. But then after it launched, there is a problem with launching Galaxy Note 7. Uh, the battery in that device easily get very very hot, and in some cases it's flame. Uh, it's, it's burst into fire and in some other cases it's explode and injures the owner or user. <clears throat> That's kind of a system that failed to perform. Okay. Why? Why information system development project become problematic or even fail? Uh, although managing system development project is quite difficult because it's abstract. A lot of uh, blame for that uh, problems was uh, 
assigned to poor project management. <coughs> it's the project manager that should control the project and deliver the system that uh, finish on time, on budget, and also deliver all the specified functionalities. <coughs> okay. So, what uh, what is project management? Project management is all the activities include planning to work. So, in modern organization, modern management perspective, all activities should be planned ahead. Okay, so fail to make a plan is plan to fail. They say. Okay. Assessing risk because anything that will be done, there's always a risk of it being failed. Uh, estimating resources required that include uh, obviously budget, uh, human resource requirement, because on each step of the project they need different people. When you start developing system, you need system analysis. When you build the system, you need programmers. When you test the system, you need testers. Okay. When you try to implement the system, you need trainer to train users. So different people for different roles at different uh, system development project. So we have to estimate it. So estimating the time, the schedule, okay? organizing the works, assigning tasks, controlling project execution. This is very uh, vital to projects could be finished on time and on budget reporting progress and analyzing the results. So there are five major variables in project management. <coughs> First is the scope, uh, second is the time, third is the cost, fourth quality, and fifth is risk. Scope, defining what system would be built, what functionalities, what uh, features that will be delivered as a completed system. A uh, few years ago, I taught a class in Master of Informatics in, in our campus. Uh, and it's coincidentally, the class is what well, was project management. Yeah. So the, the students in my class, they were uh, experienced programmers and all of them had bad or uh, nightmares, you might say, experience about fail or problematic project management. <clears throat> and the problem stem from the scope. See, when you agree to do something in business or in real life, Usually, that agreement will be put in writing. It's called contract. Both sides will sign that contract. It will be legally binding document. So, in project contract, there will be a clause to specify the scope, the time, the cost, and quality, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, you agreed on the scope. What need to be built? what need to be delivered, when and how much. <clears throat> now, it is not unusual for the client, the one that requested the system to be built, to ask for change in scope. It's either adding something, changing something, or, you know, removing something. <clears throat> Most of the time, it's change and adding something and the way they did this they don't want to change the contract because changing contract means they need to change the payment usually because they'll say to the project manager or whoever in charge it please add this it's a small change okay it won't take much time and then uh, the system developer agree Okay, to change but this will be repeated over and over. So small changes accumulated into significant changes at the end of the <coughs> project. And 
it will cause the project to have problems exceeding the schedule and obviously exceeding the budget. Okay. And many of, especially in Indonesia, uh, early career programmers or system developer did not put that request of changes in writing. Okay. So uh, when they fail to deliver the system on time, as in the contract, uh, the client will you know, have problem with it. And the developer could not defend themselves because they don't have any evidence that it changed. It's called, uh, the phenomenon is called scope creep. Changing or addition of the scope in a small increment, but repeated many times. So at the end, it will be very big changes. Okay. So what we need to do if the client asking for changes, we need to analyze the request and then show to the client the impact of that change request to the time and cost for completing the system. Say this change will add two days and five million rupiah. Or this change will add uh, will require additional time of six months and additional cost of 100 million rupiah. Tell them to the client. If the client agree, then change the contract. So the old contract will be uh, considered as void and you write up a new contract, sign it again. So you have new contract. You have new works, you have new revenue. <clears throat> That's how it should be done. To avoid scope creep. Okay, and uh, learn not to say yes uh, easily. Okay. This has been discussed previously. A lot of company have limited time, limited resources, yet they have a lot of proposed system development project and, and, and others proposal as well. So all those proposal could not be funded. You know, they have to choose, make a priority, which system development proposal should be chosen and which one should be uh, discarded, which one could be postponed until next year or in the future. Okay, so we need to identify which system development proposal would be funded and immediately executed, which one should be rejected and which one should be postponed for the next uh, financial year or the next available resources. Okay, so if this, this is the system portfolio methods to <clears throat> make a priority, if the project risk is low and the benefit is high, it should be developed immediately. Okay, but if it's uh, high risk, low benefit, it should be avoided. Okay. Uh, low risk, low benefit is usually routine for maintenance, for example, uh, but high is high benefit, it should be examined further. Okay. Like when um, <coughs> we start something new. Okay. Now, the principle of accepting or rejecting system development proposal it's just like anything or any other decision made in business. The cost of doing that should be lower than the benefit. Okay. If the cost is higher, then the benefit is immediately uh, cost for rejection. Should be abandoned as soon as possible. But if the benefit is higher than the cost, then we could consider that. The problem with information system, usually the cost is quite tangible and is quite clear and upfront. Uh, 
you ask people to build system, you have to pay the programmers, you have to pay for equipment, you have to pay for software, facilities, and things like that. But what's the benefit? A lot of benefits could be measured and converted into monetary value. Oh, it's faster. How much faster? Say the old system can handle a transaction in a minute, the new system can handle the transaction in five seconds. So we save 55 seconds. And that could translate to uh, something in monetary value. Uh, <clears throat> It could handle more transaction. The old system could only handle 1,000 transaction per, month, per minute. The new system could handle 5,000 transaction per minute. So again, there is some uh, tangible, measurable uh, value. The problem is a lot of times the new system development only shown intangible benefit like increasing customer satisfaction this is good nobody argue with it but how much is that in monetary value okay some theory said the satisfied customer will make uh, repeat purchase highly likely yes the operative words are highly likely it's not necessarily they will buy again, okay, but the chance of they are buying again is high. Okay. So it's not something that can be measured with certainty, and that's a problem. So what's other dimension of project risk? The bigger the project okay, in size, monetary value, time, and number of uh, units affected, the higher the risk. Okay, if you have projects that value billions of rupiah, then it will invite a lot of risk into the projects. Anything with high monetary value will invite risk, inherently risky than uh, compared to other uh, lower value projects. Okay. Uh, organizational complexity issue. Okay. If your system built and it involves a lot of other organization, then it become riskier. Okay. Experience with technology, <coughs> especially if you're dealing with something new, it will be high risk. And this is something that uh, a lot of people probably did not realize. Let's take a look to our own experience this year. Just before March, we were having conventional, traditional classroom. And then at the end of March, suddenly we were forced to have full online course classroom. So what happened? A lot of difficulties arise. A lot of problems, starting from uh, selecting the platform, uh, submitting assignment, uh, replacing the fingerprints, attendance system. As simple as attendance system become problematic at the time. A lot of lecturers didn't have experience with online classroom and they were uh, having difficulties. A lot of students having difficulties with uh, suddenly uh, have to access online classroom. Some of you probably still have <coughs> with telecommunication infrastructure and things like that. Costs. Okay. So when you introduce some new technology, it will require change. Okay. Some are willing to change and faster than the others. Okay. That's, that's the one that uh, need to be understood. Okay. When you introduce something, you will introduce changes. 
and some changes are seen as good, some are seen as bad. Okay. So we need to be uh, we need to be considerate about the changes. <coughs> For example, in 2000s, year 2000, Pertamina starting to use ERP. Uh, the stuff called SAP. So they hired uh, a world-class uh, consultant, Accenture, to help them implement SAP. At that time, Accenture said uh, that they will SAP will save Pertamina a lot of money and time. A transaction that it used to require five authorization now will only require one authorization. This is good news from efficiency perspective. However, changing from five authorization to one authorization, it means you eliminate four people who authorize the transaction. So what they were supposed to do with those four people that suddenly lost their job. If the changes were not managed carefully, those four people will create trouble. And it's natural. Imagine for a second that those four people have worked hard to be in their position, that they have uh, authority, they have power to authorize transactions. And that's not easy. That's required time, dedication, sacrifice. <coughs> Yeah. And then suddenly they lost their job because of this a new computer system. That could be a recipe for disasters. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> sorry. One way to uh, make a change management more smoothly is by having top management support and commitment. When I was working as consultant for Ministry of Home Affairs, we were building a sponsored by Australian government, building a system for Ministry of Home Affairs uh, for, for each one of the director. Okay. So the director itself, when we need to engage the staff, uh, so we create some kind of a, it's not seminar, it's like a, you know, a intensive meeting or like a retreat for a week. So the director, he came to the retreat, he attended the retreat, he gave a direction, he explained the importance of the system to his staff and then when we uh, break the audience into smaller groups to discuss a specific function he tried to attend those groups and participate in discussion giving advice giving inputs encouraging the staff to work together with us so that's how management support, and it's it shows the staff becomes uh, enthusiastic, they uh, working more seriously, and at the end we have a good result. Unfortunately, uh, the director, uh, his name was Pak Kun, passed away before the project finished, and the management was not as keen as him to support the system. But yeah, that's. Uh, the example. Okay, so that's for project management. Any questions about this? Anything you want to ask or clarify?
No, no one to want to ask questions. Okay, uh, that's it. That's the topics for our, our class this semester. Uh, I don't really expect you to become expert in IT after you finish this class. No, far from it. What I expect from you uh, when you finish this and one day after you finish your degree and you work either as an employee or as a business owner, you will be faced, I believe, that at some point of your career or your uh, works or your uh, business that you need to find IT solution for your work or your business. What I expect from you that if that occasion arise, not if, when that occasion arise, I, I sincerely hope you remember this class and you understand your options. Remember, benefit should be bigger than the cost. The property people, you, you can ask for ID. Uh, people for their advice. The problem with that people sometimes they <coughs> suggest you to buy gold plated solution, you know, the best technology, the most expensive equipment, the most advanced software, things like that. But you don't need to remember cost and benefit. Cost should be lower than the benefit. Uh, the late Pak the director that I told you, once gave me this, uh, told me this analogy. You know, uh, expensive cars, uh, luxurious sedans like Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche, uh, Rolls Royce, Bentley, Mercedes S Class. That's all. That's all luxurious. Uh, I like them. You know, I like to sit not up. It's very expensive, and nobody will argue that they are not a good car. They are a good car. They are very, very uh, good car with high technology, the best in the class. However, Ferrari will do you no good if you want something to move building materials if you want to move sands if you want to move uh, rocks if you want to transport uh, bricks Ferrari will be useless in that occasion you need truck you need pick up even old better trucks is better than Ferrari in moving bricks. 25 years old pickup will be better and more useful than Lamborghini in moving rocks, in moving sands. So that's the analogy. You need to see uh, your requirement, your need and then find the appropriate solution. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, I wish you well on your exam and uh, your study. Uh, I hope we can see each other again in other occasion, not the same class, hopefully. Uh, take care and Keep your health and condition. Okay, so see you around.